What is good, everybody? Do you know what time it is? It is time for yet another Nashville studio tour. My name is Paul, the fifth fifth of Legacy Studios Nash. You might be asking yourself, hey, Paul, why are you smoking a cigar? The studio we're going to visit today, the owner loves a good cigar. After the filming, he sat down with me and gave me the cigar as well as this piece of memorabilia here. We met recently on social media via another mutual friend, but that's how things work here in Nashville. The music community is so interconnected, but guess what? So is life and networking. Man, this is a good cigar. Thank you so much, Jason. The studio owner we're going to see today, he lives on the north side of Nashville, about 30 minutes away. It's a fun, beautiful trip. He bought his home in 2018, and for about six months in 2019, he did a renovation. This video is a little different. He and I sat down to do a interview type style. We're gonna throw some B-roll on top of things. Being a musician, drummer, and bass player, and audio guy myself, he is too, we instantly connected. During the time there, I found out he has about 15 different drum kits. He has one that's set up for recording, another one for different styles, and we got to jam, and it was a stellar experience. He has about 30 different snare drums, 30 guitars, awesome control room, killer speaker setup, and now I can call him my friend. This drummer has played for some major national country acts. Not to name drop, but you might know a few. Lindsey L and FGL, Florida Georgia Line. Currently, he is on the road with somebody named Jason Michael Carroll. Before I introduce this drummer to you, let me take a sip out of my still water sound coffee mug. <sighs> Jason, everything just tastes better out of that mug. So thank you for your hospitality. Thank you for having me over and thank you for opening your home studio so everybody can see it. Ladies and gents, you may have seen this drummer on another studio tour with Andrew Masters. Guess what? I am no Andrew Masters, but I am Paul the Fifth. Today we are going to meet Jason Schmidt of Still Water Sound. If you guys are ready, let's get this show on the road. Here we go. Nashville, Tennessee, the state capital, the fastest growing city in the U.S. right now, home of hot chicken, right in the heart of the Bible Belt, and we are known for music. Music City, USA. We're not just known for country anymore. Things are so diverse, and it will blow your mind. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul the Fifth, and I am walking down Music Row in Nashville, Tennessee. I am giving to you studio tours Right behind me are some of the classic studios right here in the city. Here at Music Row, we are immersed with music studios such as this one right behind me. Everywhere you go, there is a studio. You can throw a rock and hit a musician or a recording studio here in Nashville. In this series, I'm gonna be taking you to some of the home studios in Nashville. Behind me is a commercial facility. We'll be visiting some of those as well. We might be seeing some big ones, some small ones, maybe some bedroom producers, and some studios in between. And guess what? I might have a celeb or two on the show as well. And if you are ready, let's go. Good everybody, I am Paul the Fifth. I am at Stillwater Sound, a little west of Nashville. Hosting us is drummer Jason Schmidt. Hey everybody. Hey man, Good thank to have you, you at the studio. so much for having me out yeah, today absolutely. and spending some time with us. Yeah. 
The studio is amazing. Thank you very much. My mind is blown. I'm loving it. But could you tell me how you came up with the name of Stillwater Sound? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I graduated uh, high school in uh, Old Town, Maine. And I was living with my grandparents at the time. And the road that they lived on was Stillwater Avenue. So I wanted to give a little homage to them and a tribute. They were so supportive of my music when I was coming up. So the Stillwater Sound came as just an homage to them, Stillwater Sound. Okay, because everything has a story. I love that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was cool because when I started posting promo about the studio, uh, friends of mine up north would be like, oh, I love the studio name because they knew exactly why I did it. So it was cool. Awesome. So I know this is on the upper part of your house. Yep. It's kind of the control room. And then across the stairs is the tracking room. Tracking yeah. room. How long did it take you to put this whole thing together when you bought the property? Well, luckily the uh, bonus room was already built. So th this, this portion was built. We did some stuff to it, but this was already built. And then there was just a little small cubby door in the wall that opened up to a completely unfinished space that was like 14, around 1400 square feet. So um, we just basically had to raise the stairs coming up in, in from the downstairs and then uh, put a hole in the wall and then started building out into it. So we, I got the house in 2017. Uh, construction for the studio started in January of 2019 and completed uh, around June of 2019. Okay, pretty quick. Yeah, I had a really great, uh, they were called Integrity Builders. Okay. Uh, and they were just phenomenal crew. Um, you know, they took my vision that I had and we, you know, we mapped stuff out and drew stuff out and whatnot. We had an architect as well. And uh, they just took it and ran with it. They're just phenomenal what they do. Okay. So when you were consulting with them, did you talk about like acoustics and things too? Or did you do these yeah, panels we, yourself? We, I built the panels myself. We, we discussed uh, acoustics, but then I'd also done a lot of research. I talked to some acoustical engineers. So I kind of had some ideas of what I was going to do. And then we had the room shot after it was built and just made sure that like everything, <laughs> everything worked out as if it was supposed to. Perfect. Cause it sounds good in here Thank you. before we uh, were doing the film filming, we actually listened to some music and I know you said on the walls, you've got some paneling down there for kind of some bass traps. Yeah. And... Just to, cause the, the, the sidewall comes down to a knee wall and the knee wall is uh, two feet. So, so base and it won't be kind of rumbling along the two sides of the room. I built some panels similar to what's in the other room, but, but taller and uh, put them on both sides. So that would kind of work. And there's bass traps in the corner. So it kind of chills out all that rumbling stuff and keeps it, you know, lively, but controlled. For sure. Yeah. You have a, on the speakers, we'll talk about that in a minute here, guys, but you can definitely hear all frequency spectrums. You can hear your lows your low mids, your mids, you can hear your highs and everything is just really well balanced. And, and wherever you go in the room, it stays like that. So that's what I love. So when, we, when we're doing mixing in here and we've got the clients, you know, we'll turn the chairs from the lounge around and we'll bring in an extra office chair and everyone kind of sits you know, around the room and it sounds good no matter where you're sitting. So I've been very fortunate with how the studio turned out. Great, congratulations. Thank man. you. Again, I love it. On the panels in there, where did you get your materials? Did you get them from like... I, I bought the, the raw material, the uh, Rockwell Insulation. I, I, I hate that I can't remember the name of the company, but it's an insulation company uh, in downtown Nashville. Okay. That's all they do is they do insulation. So I ordered a four inch by 24 inch Rockwell. Okay. And Best then stuff. I got the uh, interior one by fours that I built the, the initial box out of uh, from Home Depot. And then from Lowe's, I got the gray trim that I put around. And then the fabric is just Joanne's Fabrics. Okay. I went in there in Clarksville and, and found a, a color that, I, that went with the theme, and I, and I liked it, and then got, those, uh, got that fabric. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, it's great to support stores like Sweetwater or yeah, Guitar absolutely. Center Pro. But if you can save some money, make stuff yourself, it's a fun project. And at the very end, it looks great, and it's very fulfilling to know that you put that work into it as well yeah absolutely i i wanted to have my hands on it because you know I, I knew exactly what i wanted it to end up looking like so it was one of those things like i could either tell somebody to do exactly what i wanted or i could just do it myself so i chose to do it myself very cool i love that so we are both drummers 
I'm sure Jason's yep. probably a lot better than I oh, am. Oh, no, don't say that. A lot of times <laughs> I play, but um, tell me something about the artist or how you got started in drumming. Well, I got started in drumming in New York. I lived in Long Island, New York, in a town called West Hempstead uh, in Nassau County. And I started off playing there when around people in the neighborhood was where I kind of got my start. Um, there were some older kids that played drums, so they were like showing me stuff. But I started taking formal lessons when I was 10 and from a guy named Napoleon Revels Bay in Long Island. And he was Aretha Franklin's drummer for a bit and Sweet. just phenomenal. And I learned so much from him and owe a lot to my career to him. Um, and then I, f I followed with the school music programs from elementary school all the way through high school. I did jazz band and orchestra and marching band and the whole nine yards, uh, concert band, of course. Um, so I did that and I continued with private lessons. And then I went on to, uh, to study at Berkeley for a bit and study performance while I was there and had some great teachers while I was there, Kenwood Denard and uh, guys, the, so many that were, the, that were just phenomenal there. But he was one, Kenwood Denard was always one that stuck out because he played with, uh, with Jocko. So that always stuck out to me, <laughs> just the stories that he had. He had a really cool story where he would actually be playing drums one-handed, playing keyboards with his left hand, and he would sing the song about Jocko. And it was a story that he would sing, and it was just wild to watch his, his in independence and how he could do all those things all at once. It was pretty phenomenal. That's a lot of talent to do that, because us oh, he's drummers, <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah, you have to move your feet, hands, and let your brain decipher what's going to happen. Yeah. I started about that same age. I was about 12. Oh, cool. My dad played saxophone, so I took after him. And then I had um, had to get a retainer and braces. Oh, no. And you can't really, you have to, you know, flick your tongue up against the reed. Yeah. With a retainer, you can't really do that. And then I just started naturally banging around as a kid. Nice. So I started playing drums. And then I took private lessons too, middle school, high school, marching, honors, band, orchestra, all that stuff. Came down here. Met our fellow drummer, Mark Ali of Ali Visuals, who's filming things today. Yep. <laughs> and he shared a space and kept doing the thing, rock and roll. And then I realized I want to get in the backside of things, um, be in the background and do production. And so I started learning music production, recording, went to SAE, big shot to them. How did you kind of transition from drumming? I know you're still touring, playing drums, yeah. to doing the studio stuff. Well, it was something that I always wanted to do. I got my first four track. Well, I made my first record um, with my high school band at 17, and I was just blown away by the process. I thought it was so cool because before that, it seemed almost like only big stars made records. You know, so I was like, oh, I hope I make a record one day. And then, you know, we found a college that, uh, Huston College in Bangor, Maine, that was, had an audio production course for their students. And they would be able to bring in bands. So a lot of times they would record bands in the area. So we got to go in there and make our first record. And I was just blown away by the process. Like, this is the coolest thing I've ever done. So I, I got bit by the bug then. And I got my first four track when I graduated uh, the very next year in, in 18. And I got a little small console. And I would just record the bands I was in. I would record my friends' bands. And... I would just learn as I went and I would get under people's wings that had more experience than me like, oh, show, show me how you EQ that snare drum or, you know, how, how did you think about this when you were blending the vocals? And, you know, I would just an ask tons and tons of questions. I probably, I'm sure I annoyed some of my friends, but I had questions That's how you for learn. days. <laughs> it's the only way you learn. Um, so I made the transition from, from that and, and touring um, to wanting to build my own space. I had a space in Raleigh with, with my best friend, Terry Harden. Uh, we had a space there, um, and then when I got really busy touring, we stopped uh, doing the studio because there just wasn't enough time to, to do both. He was busy, I was busy. Um, but when I moved here, I knew I wanted to have a space. I had um, just like a mixing small tracking room when I was in uh, my condo in Nashville when I first moved to town. But I knew I wanted to get a house at some point where I could really build out the studio that I had in my head. And then, then that led to 2017 and, and building this place. Okay. Well, you've done the damn thing. <laughs> it <laughs> looks you. great. I love it. Thank you. Real quick, I was going to touch base on uh, Berkeley. Yeah. How was your experience there? It's phenomenal. It was, what I, what I loved about it is, you know, I, 
I understand like the big fish in a small column, uh, small uh, pond, you know, concept. And what I loved about Berkeley was everyone were guppies in the Shark Tank, you know, because there were so many phenomenal players and teachers, and you know, and and at Berkeley there's students from all over the world. Yes. So it's not just the U.S. or not just Massachusetts. It's it's literally all over. They have a huge foreign exchange program at Berkeley. So it was so cool to, to rub elbows with these people that were just so phenomenal and worldly in their playing and learn not only from teachers, but learn from students. And it was a really phenomenal, phenomenal experience. Great. I'm glad that you had that. I'm a little sad and jealous because I actually got accepted to Berkeley in 2004. Oh, nice. I was 24, but my grandmother passed away at the time and it just wasn't the right timing. Sorry but to hear that. Thank you. But I made an audition tape. I had to get out this little <laughs> camera. I didn't know what I was doing and all this stuff. And <laughs> it worked. <laughs> it, yeah. But I ended up going to SAE for music production and things. Nice. Um, are you self-taught in that or did you just learn it from? Self-taught. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I interned at a studio that is now um, no longer there, unfortunately, in Raleigh um, called uh, Jag Studios. They were around in the 90s. They recorded bands uh, that were big on the North Carolina scene. Uh, DAG, uh, Corrosion of Conformity, Cry of Love, uh, Dylan Fence, the Six String Drag. The names go on and on, and they, they all recorded at that studio. So I, uh, so I interned there, and, and Byron showed me quite a bit of stuff when I was there. And then, uh, like now, here at, at, at Stillwater, we have a, a really phenomenal engineer that does, that's the chief engineer here, uh, Charlie Hubs, his nickname's Chubbs. And uh, so I'm constantly learning from him. So yeah, but, but self-taught, yeah. I didn't take any classes or anything. Okay, well cool. It's all a combination of a couple things. Good equipment, having good drums, a good player prepped, ready to go, having good pre's, good game staging. Yep. Sometimes you can get some of those best records from just having a combination of that. And then I've heard stuff that hasn't even been um, you know any effects added because everything was played and recorded so well um as far as like your touring stuff would you mind mentioning some of the artists that you played with and who you're currently sure uh with? currently i'm with jason michael carroll and i've been playing off and on with him since uh 2000 so i played with him for six years and then was uh off doing other things for 10 years and then i've been back uh for almost six years so a little over 20 years now uh i've been playing with him uh, but past, past people I've worked with is uh, Florida Georgia Line, Lindsey L., Ray Scott, Pam Tillis, um, let's see who else, Brian Davis, um, Rick Monroe, I love, I love Rick. Um, yeah, so those are some of the, some of the people that I play with since I've been, a lot of the gigs that I've been on, I've been on for like two or three or more years at a time. So I haven't, maybe not played with as many artists, but I've, I've had long, longer term gigs with those artists. Cool. So interesting fact about Sean Fuller from FGL, drummer. He and I are from the same town in Indiana, from Evansville. Oh, cool. Yeah, and I didn't even realize it till I came down here and met him. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, he's a good, he's a good dude. We, uh, we got to meet year, years ago, and, and he's been a, a champion for me, and, and, and I've loved watching his success. It was kind of cool to, you know, we both shared the history of that band. So he's a really good guy, phenomenal player, phenomenal player. Awesome. What was it like being the backbeat for Lindsay? It was great. What I really love about Lindsay is she's a player's player, mm -hmm. which I really, really dig. Like she really gets into it and, and, and it's very emotional how she plays. Uh, she feels every note she plays. She you know, there's nothing fake about it. You know, she's not phoning, she never phones it in. Uh, so playing with her was really great. You know, she's got definitely the Keith Urban influence and the John Mayer influence, all while sounding like herself, exactly. which I think is awesome. Um, but there was definitely a, a band vibe when, when we played, because you know, she likes like, the John Mayer trio, is you know, something that she's really into. So you know, she loved having that, that, that band vibe when she played. As far as like your studio setup, we've got a pretty awesome table set up here. And is that an S3? Yeah, S3, uh, Avid Console. Okay. Or controller. I controller. Say. Controller. Yeah. And then we've got monitoring things, the personas. Uh, yeah, the central station. Central station. I love that because you can you can change between your speakers and you can add your sub in or out so it doesn't have to be wired in 
all the time to what you're listening to. So if you're, you're trying to check your low end mixes, you can turn your sub off. And then it's got multiple inputs. So like we've got the, uh, the, the main computer going through one input and then we have an aux cable that we can, uh, you know, if someone brings a reference track, okay. you know, to listen to like, oh, I want this song to sound like this or the drums to sound like this. We can just plug straight into the aux cable and listen through it through the monitors and really hear what they're going for. Awesome. So what is your monitoring situation? We got JBLs and... Yep, JBLs for the B-Mix and then uh, Event Studio Precision 8s are okay. the main speakers. Awesome. And then a JBL sub in the corner. Okay, sweet. It's kind of hidden, tucked away. Okay. <laughs> so what do we have at the hub of things? Is that a Mac Mini? Yeah, it's a Mac Mini. Okay. And then uh, it's not the M1 Mac Mini. It's the one uh, right before the M1. Okay. And then, like we said already, using the Central Station, and then uh, two of the Apollo X16s. Ooh. So I'm only using 24 tracks of it currently, because uh, that's all the outboard uh, pre's that I have. On the X16s, they don't have the mic pre's built in, right. like the 8s, so you have to have outboard gear. That's so I've got, tw- yeah, us. that's what all that is. Okay. So I've got 24 channels of, of mic pre, so that's why I'm using 24 channels at the time. It's, I'd like to upgrade and be able to do 32. But for now, 24 is plenty for what we're doing. I know I've seen your, your kit back there. It's massive. Uh, how many mics do you have on that? Um, everything is mic'd. Okay. So like every drum is mic'd, snare is mic'd twice, top and bottom, hi-hat mic, overheads, kick in, kick out, and then all the toms are top mic'd. Okay. Um, and then we alter in when I do play stuff with it. I have a remote uh, satellite kick. And we'll put like a low freak mic on that. Those are nice. Uh, so it's like, so you're sort of getting like a, an 808 kind of vibe yeah. with it. So it sounds completely different than what the main, uh, the main kick drum is trying to emulate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can blend that low end in. Yeah. It's like really full and thick. Definitely, definitely. And then you have a really cool mic behind yeah. the drummer, <laughs> a beer can mic. Which is funny being sober, but I, I have a, a beer can mic. So it's a, it's a Piezo trash mic. Mm-hmm. And it sounds cool on like breakdowns when you just want a different different sound. You can kind of bleed in and, and it's just good and trashy and, and just sounds cool. Yeah, when I was going to the recording workshop in Chill Coffee, Ohio, we made one and uh, gave it to one of the instructors. Oh, no, nice. it worked. It was pretty cool. Yeah, they're very cool. Yeah, I, I didn't know what they would sound like, especially being metal and all the you know all the sustain through it and everything. I didn't know what it would, what it would do, but it, it sounds cool. Yeah. So over here we've got Keyboard World. Yep, keyboard world. So we have a controller. Um, so we, we do we do a decent amount of string stuff. So I have okay. the east west strings in here. So we have Ooh, a controller nice. now for uh, being able to do that instead of the, the smaller controller in the octave switch. <laughs> we can actually do the full full thing on that. And then just for the uh, sound modules over there for like more older school stuff, we have the uh, Karma. That's uh, a controller for those. Okay. And then some old school drum machines just because they're fun. Yeah. Awesome. So you have quite the collection of guitars. Yes. I know you're telling me you have like 15 basses, yep. six electrics, and about four to five acoustics. Acoustics, yeah, and then a ukulele bass as well. <laughs> Sweet. Where did you come up with all those? I mean, I know you just probably got them over time. Just over the years, um, collecting, um, you know, finding different ones that I that I liked, and there and the, every every guitar and bass, especially the basses, serve a purpose. So there's a definite tone, or they're set up with round wounds. The next one's set up with flat wounds. There's fretless. There's five strings. Uh, so there's there's different ones in in the in the collection. So I just kind of got it as as time time went on. And then uh, my best friend in, in North Carolina, Terry Harden, he's uh, phenomenal at finding stuff online. Like I, all I have to do is go, I want this, and he'll find it. Okay. When I've searched for it and can't find it, somehow he finds it for me. So I've gotten several bases through through him finding them. Okay. Any relation to Tommy Harden? No, no, no. It would have been cool if it was. Okay. <laughs> and then drums, you've got Pearl. You're sponsored by Pearl. Yep. How many kids do you have in there total? Um, in that room, I've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Five kits in there. Okay. Two set up. Okay. To set up the restaurant and shelving. So when I had the studio built, it was very important for me to have storage. So we put shelving along the left side of the room yeah. for, uh, for all the drum kits. And then uh, built a snare wall in the back for all the snare drums. And then percussion is on the right-hand side, like different hand drums and whatnot. Okay. And your 
using Aquarian heads. Aquarian heads, uh, Pisces symbols, Pisces which symbols. I've fallen in love with their master's line. Okay. I just got a set of those from Pisces and put them up on the, the kit probably back in March, and they haven't come down. Okay. They've just fit every single track that I've had to play on. They just, they, they work and they're phenomenal symbols and they wash really well and they have great articulation. And I just, I'm blown away by them. Sweet. I've never played, um, played them before. So I'd like to get into that. Yeah. Check them out. The forks, forks has them over there. So you can go, you know, go and give them around and you, obviously I have them here. So check them out while you're here. Okay. And then as far as sticks, what do you use there? I've been with Regal Tip for 20, let's see how many years now, 26 years. Okay. So I've been using their sticks, and I use the uh, 2BX okay. model. So it's a little little thicker, but it's it's got a little bit of length to it, so it doesn't feel as beefy. Um, having that little bit of extra length, it kind of d- distributes the weight a little better. Okay. One thing I wanted to touch on is you've got this awesome studio. Thank you. You're welcome. I love it. I'm jealous. <laughs> but what is a specialty that you have here at Stillwater? that you really just focus on when you have clients coming in here? I think that we're, we're a little off the beaten path than, than other studios. Like there's so many guys in town that are phenomenal at what they do and, and putting out the records that they put out, you know, friends of mine like Grady Saxman and Chris Condon and, Mm -hmm. and Sean Rogers and, and all these guys that are just so great at what they do. And um, I just think here we, we think a little differently so I think that we can kind of fill a cool, cool niche that's, that's still there and be able to contribute to the community like those other guys do. Uh, okay. Just think, think a little differently, I think, is our, is our approach. Uh, definitely, you know, the singer-songwriter, we do a lot of stuff with singer-songwriters. So it's building tracks from a work demo or sometimes they just come in here in the room with an, a guitar and their vocal and mm-hmm. just saying, you know, here's the songs. And then we sit there and shape them from the ground up and then give them their final product at the end. Okay. And I know you said you um, do some bass and yes. drum remote yes, sessions. Yes, I do. Yeah, okay. absolutely. absolutely. So, so uh, yeah, that's a great way to, to connect with me on Instagram. Uh, Schmitty Drums or Stillwater Sound TN uh, is the direct studio Instagram. And, uh, you yeah, I do remote drum or bass tracking from here. Okay, cool. And as far as DAW, Pro Tools, and Logic? Pro Tools is the main. Uh, my chief engineer, that's the, the, what he likes to use the most. So we definitely have uh, the newest version of Pro Tools with all the bells and whistles. Okay. Um, but I also am comfortable in Logic, so we do have Logic here too. <laughs> that's what I do as well. Yeah. <laughs> Got to have Pro Tools since that's the industry standard. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if you play drums for somebody and you just send it off as a two-track, I guess, with the... Yeah, so basically what I, what I, how I like to do it is they'll, they'll send me the, the, the track, mm-hmm. and uh, usually it's like uh, vocals, guitars, or sometimes it's a fully mixed uh, two-track, uh, and then the click would be separate that they'd send, and uh, then there'll be some notes that they'll send in an email, and then sometimes they'll send a reference track. Um, like they'll be like, oh, can you make the drums you know, kind of have this vibe? Uh, tone wise or whatever Mm -hmm. and then we just get in there we set up a pro tool session and then we start dialing in tones so we make sure we're checking that off the list and then i'll go down the list of notes that they gave and make sure that i'm giving all of those and then um and then put my own you know stamp and vibe onto it and then once i do that then we'll mix a quick two mix and we'll email it to the client and then let them listen to it and then be like oh you know like this one i just did for a lavella uh, last week, um, I sent it to Josh, and he listened to. It, he loved everything. He's like, "Oh, can you put a longer fill here and a, a, a you know a longer fill in this part?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure, no problem." Went back in the room, knocked out some different options for fills, sent it to him, and he he was happy with everything. So Venmo the the money, and the track was done and sent to him. Very cool. How long does that take you to put together? It um it depends on on how much the material they send and and how huh. stripped down it is. Um, you know sometimes you know the stuff that comes without a click track. You know I like to take a couple takes at it because I'm mm-hmm. trying to to vibe where they're ebbing and flowing and speeding up and slowing down since I don't have a reference track like a, uh, with a click. Gotcha. Um, so that makes it a little harder. But usually it's it's thirty minutes or less. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So you know from from the time of loading the track in because. 
we we work a lot off of templates because we do this so often right so we have a lot of our our recording templates already set so we can start as a basis point so it, it's not that hard to get sounds going up since they're already templated right uh, and then it's just taking a couple pass that passes out the song and it's then sending it to them yeah and then okay. making sure that they're happy with the mix but yeah about 30 45 minutes at the most okay that's how we roll here in Nashville. Yeah, quick, it's, quick and it's, fast. It's quick and Clock's fast. Clock's running. <laughs> That's right. Professionals. With that being said, I've got a question for you. Sure. If somebody's watching and they're interested in creating their own studio or getting into music or coming here to Nashville, what advice would you give to them? As far as building a studio, there's so much... Uh, reference out there online there's it great really vi- like like your channel was showing studio tours Thank uh you. andrew masters you know he did a studio tour of my place um and just random people you've never heard of that are like all the way across the world that, that i saw one that was a studio built in denmark in a storage container you know which i thought was kind of cool but just watch out there and, and see what you like what you, what aesthetic is pleasing to you because you have to spend many hours in this room yeah. So you want it to have a vibe that is that is not only special to you, but hopefully will be special to your clients. So look at what's out there and, and see what's appealing to you, and then hopefully that will transfer to the clients that you have. Draw stuff out, get a notebook, and, and make notes like, you know, here's what I want the sound panels to look like, and mm-hmm. here's what I'm thinking about the signal chain, and, you know, just make lots and lots and lots of notes. So when it comes down to the construction time, you have something that's going to keep you focused and in line, because everything's written out that you've you know you've been dreaming about and wanting to do, uh, as far as getting involved in the music portion, um, you know the, like the saying goes, you got to be in it to win it. Exactly. So you, you know you got to be here in Nashville or L.A. or New York. Yep. Um, you know one of the major music cities. Not to say that you can't do music in other places because you can, mm-hmm. but if you want to kind of be on that 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 next level and uh, have a city concentrated on music, you got to be in one of the major three. But yeah, just get to whichever town, you know, is more appealing to you and get out there and meet people. Exactly. You know, it's, it's constantly meeting people. You know, that's what I love about this town is, you know, I've been here since 06 and, um, you know, people move to town all the time. You know, I've met Mark, you know, which was great. I met you now. So just, you know, constantly meeting people that are in the same field as what you do. And I think is makes a big impact when you're trying to move here and do music. It sure does wrapping things up here yeah do you have any questions for me uh what did you like the most about the studio when you came here the vibe awesome like you said it's a little off the beaten path uh it was a very beautiful pleasant drive uh not that it didn't even feel like that was that far but when you walk in and you feel like it's magical oh that's great (laughs) this may sound weird (laughs) but it smells good. It, the lighting is killer. You have an amazing setup. I'm familiar with boards, but if you're a musician or non-musician and you see something look like this gear, it's just like, I'm a gear junkie. It's like a little kid in a guitar yeah, center or right. a Sweetwater store. So seeing all that stuff, it just feels professional. The atmosphere, the warm welcome, killer drums in there just the vibe like it makes me feel like i need to come out here and actually start tracking with you welcome anytime (laughs) yeah i that that was that was important for me was to to do the vibe because i wanted people to come in here and be creative from the minute they get here and feel relaxed and not feel like they're stuffy in a stuffy because sometimes studios can be stuffy you know fluorescent lights everywhere and it's like super super bright and you know, not as vibey, you know, I, the studios that I always kind of drifted towards were some of the more famous ones that definitely had a vibe, mm-hmm. you know, your, stu- you know, your sound city and, and, and places like that, you know, it's whatever the good, bad or indifferent, but it had a vibe about it. Mm-hmm. And that's what I definitely love. Muscle Shoals is another one, another one, you know, it definitely has its vibe and that's, it was always important to me in the building. So I'm glad that you like that. Yes. It feels very homey. It is in your home. Yeah. It feels comfortable. It feels like a place that I could spend months at just if I had the budget for it. Yeah. <laughs> I know you said that sometimes you'll start at like 10 in the morning. That was a window. You boarded it up and you're working. The vibes are flowing and you're like, oh my gosh, it's 10 o'clock at night. 
Yeah, we're real lucky because we're not on top of our neighbors uh, here out in the country. So what I love about us, you know, we've gone as late as two in the morning here, uh, tracking stuff and, you know, full drum kit going uh, and everything. And none of my neighbors are any wiser because luckily with the build, we did things right. Um, so the walls have drywall, sound stop and drywall. Um, so it, it definitely controls stuff going out there. And then there was rock wall insulation put everywhere. So that helps with the dampening of anything really escaping. And there's no windows in there. So mm -hmm. there's no escape that way. Right. So it, it helps so that we can have those later sessions when the ideas are flowing. We don't want to have to you know, stop at 10 o'clock at curfew or anything. We can just keep on going until the wee hours of the morning and we're not going to bother anybody. Right on. So if anybody wants to contact you, what's the best way for them to do that and book a session? Either way through, uh, through Instagram is, is definitely the best way. Uh, Schmitty Drums, and that's S-C-H-M-I-D-T-Y Drums. Okay. And that's drums with an S, not a Z. I know some people use the Z. Uh, and then, or Stillwater Sound TN is the direct uh, Instagram for the studio. Okay. Right on. And then do you have a website or anything like that at all? It's actually being built as we speak. Okay. <laughs> so it, it, it'll be Stillwater uh, Sound TN when, okay. that, when that comes out as well. Okay. Well, sweet. This has been super awesome. I'm stoked that this has all worked out. And like you said, um, you've been doing one with Andrew. You connected via Facebook. That's how we met. Believe it or not, this is the first time we've ever connected Yeah, today. absolutely. <laughs> um, social media is a blessing. So again, thank you. Thank you so much for coming by. For having us out. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, get a hold of him. You know what to do. We'll see you in the next one.